What is up, everybody? Welcome to AK Plays. I'm AK. Let's play. Fatality. All right, everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you guys my funky final measure. The reason it's funky is because it's a little different. Um, I've used and I enjoy final measure healer. I think that that's one of the best ways to run it. But I've also tried final measure tank, which is fun, but not quite as successful. And I've tried final measure DPS, which is fun, but I feel like it's missing something. So what I did is made a final measure that has a little bit of stamina, good healing and can still do some damage. It's not meant really for solo, but it can work in solo. I would say that it's more meant as a support build still on your team, but it's more support DPS and support healing than it is just traditional 100% support build. Now your primary weapon is a house with deadly unforgiving card counter and those attachments. Your backup weapon is a lightweight M4 with sustained predatory and those attachments. And your pistol is just I would keep around a determined cool headed in case you need to get your alt back. Now the first piece is your chest rolled for electronics, health, skill haste, and ammo capacity. And then these are the gear set bonuses for final measure if you're unfamiliar. And the mask is rolled for electronics, skill power, and that damage to elites should be burn resistance. Now the knee pads are rolled for stamina, health, shock, burn, and bleed resistance. Uh, that bleed could be switched to disrupt resistance if that's more of your playstyle. Um, backpack, I would roll for stamina, health, and burn resistance. And on the gloves, we've got rolled for firearms, SMG damage, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. And on the holster, we have skill haste. And our mods, you can see our electronic skill haste, first aid self heal, and first aid self heal. We're not gonna be using an immunizer on this one, so the first aid self heal is gonna be important. That's why we have first aid self heal on the holster as well. On to the knees, we have electronic skill haste and first aid self heal. On the mask, we have electronic skill haste again. And finally, on the chest, we have electronic skill haste and electronic skill haste. Now, let's take a look at the critical hit chance and critical hit damage. You can see that we have 37.5 critical hit chance and some good critical hit damage and good headshot damage. Um, on top of that, you can see that we have 31% skill haste, which means if we're in a reclaimer box, we're going to almost hit that max skill haste cap, which is good. Our EDR is at 40%, and if you leave the bleed resistance alone, you're going to have a good amount of that too with good burn resistance. Now we look at our skills. We have the pulse, it's conceal pulse with 20% critical hit chance and 20% critical hit damage, which is gonna put your crit chance almost at max with that house. Now, the booster shot for your heal, which is a pretty good heal and it gives you damage, a damage buff and damage resistance buff. Then I run the recovery link as well. And for talents, we run adrenaline to keep status effects off of you, critical save to give you more resistance when at low health, and combat medic to heal your teammates because this is more of a team oriented build. Now, if you are running solo, you can take off the combat medic and either run strike back, one is none, or on the move. If you're in an area with a lot of NPCs, on the move is definitely the good choice. If you're not, I would pick strike back, but if you just like headshots, then, then one is none could work for you. No matter what, I would keep chain reaction because as a final measure, you will be spamming nades because every time someone hits you with one, you'll get another nade. Now that's the build. It is really, really fun. It has good heals, good stamina, and good firearms. I know 4,000 might be a little low for some people, and if you're one of those people that likes to run a little bit, uh, a little more glass cannon then, I would say that you can take one of the stamina rolls and make it a firearms roll, and then take one of your electronic skill haste mods and make that a stamina skill haste mod. If you do that, you'll have a good amount more firearms, and you'll probably hit a little bit harder. However, you won't be able to face tank as much, which I'm sure you know if you're kind of a player that likes that play style with more firearms and less stamina. 
So that's the way that you want to do that if you want to go up in firearms. However, I like it with 4,000, even though it doesn't seem like a ton, it still does a lot of work and I really enjoy this build. Now this first clip here, I'll explain to you, I'm using Overdose because I was trying out a few different things with this build and Overdose seemed like a good choice because the heal was just insane. It was three bars worth of healing and I could go into my overheal with it. But as most of you should know, Booster Shot gives you that damage buff and that damage resistance buff, which is really, really nice, even though the heal is a little less. So the pros and cons of that, the overdose, when you get that big healing, it's going to make the enemy think twice and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's an intimidating heal, they just gained a bunch of health back, I just took all that away for nothing. And it's kind of psychologically pretty impacting, but for good players, they're going to probably not be that affected by that, and you're going to rather have the booster shot, because that damage buff and the damage resistance buff, plus you're, you're, the healing isn't that much worse, I would say that the booster is definitely worth it, which these two fights should outline. I do fight this guy here, and then I fight him in a minute also. Uh, this first fight here, you can see that I did proc his recovery link, and then at the end he procs mine right before he goes down. and. It was a very close fight, it went back and forth, you can see this was a long drawn out fight between two players, and I switched to the booster for our next fight when we do a 1v1, and it is a little bit uh, quicker of a fight because I think the booster adds a little bit more of an advantage. Um, now this guy was very cool, he was a good player, and so we started doing some 1v's and then we teamed up and fought in the DZ, but I believe he was running either a Banshee or a Banshee Pred. And it was a very close fight, especially because he had a DPS build, and this was kind of like a jack-of-all-trades build. Now, also to, to his credit, he was running a lightweight M4 at close range. His build is probably built more for long-range combat. When I'm using a house and I'm meant for close-range combat, I had a little bit of an advantage there. But on to the next part, which is this manhunt. Now, this isn't like an absolutely insane manhunt where we fight a bajillion people and we do crazy things. Um, that one, I have a couple, I have a, about two videos ago, it was a underrated support build. And the first part is Final Measure, and that has some good manhunts with this build in it if you'd like to see. I can link that up in the corner. But uh, either way, this manhunt is more to show specific things. Um, I wanted to like make a more of a low speed manhunt so you can see what this build does especially when it's not affected by a ton of players being around it. When you do fight an army of players and you have your four-man team with you, this build takes more of a niche role where it does some damage when required, it survives, it catches grenades, throws grenades, and occasionally heals. It really doesn't look all that great for video, especially when, uh, when I'm fighting a server with my team, but when it's less people on my team and we're fighting less people, it becomes a little bit more entertaining because you get to see that it actually can do DPS, it can survive, and it can heal and heal its teammates. Uh, your heal isn't going to be huge for your teammates, it's only going to be about a bar, bar and a half, depending what build they're running. And that is definitely helpful. That can definitely save somebody's life occasionally. I've tossed somebody a booster shot and saved their life in the last couple days. But um, I would say that don't count on it as a healer build. It is definitely more of a support DPS because it does some damage with its uh, 4K firearms. I know that doesn't sound crazy, but when that pulse is up and you're almost at max crit chance, it does do some damage. And it definitely does enough, as you can see in the previous clips, that it can put people down and it can win even against DPS builds. Uh, plus, if you do catch a, uh, a frag grenade and you get a firearms buff, then this thing is hitting like it has like 6k firearms is what it feels like, and if the pulse is up, it might even feel like more than that. Then uh, you could also, uh, if you're going to change out where you take away a little bit of stamina and add a little bit of firearms to this build, you're going to feel like you're going to do a bunch of damage. Obviously, be careful if you run with lower stamina than this. Um, I kind of like the way this is, but I don't know, to everybody has a different play style, so uh, do with it what you'd like. I think it's a really good build and it fits a very interesting role. But that's the build and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or anything you want to ask, just put it in the comments below and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Nah, hold on a sec. Now, this guy has attack link, I did not know that. Don't face tank attack link. When you try your best but you don't succeed Agent, I need I you to take care of a problem. Agent, I need you to take care of a problem. Agent, I need you to take care of a problem.
Agent, I need I you got to take care of a problem. 